Hello everyone and welcome back to the 4Play channel. I'm Bella. I'm Jace. Today's video is all about a review of Temptation Cruise 2024. This is going to be a more condensed, concise version for YouTube, but if you're wanting a long, in-depth version, we have an over an hour long podcast episode about that that we will link down below that you can listen to. We just want to say real quick before we get to today's video, we had a lot of people come up to us on the cruise and just say that they watched our review last year and it helped them decide to come on this cruise or they got some of the ideas and it really helped them a lot. So if you guys are considering booking for the cruise for next year and this video helps you, we really, really appreciate if you book through us. We'll have a link down right here. It doesn't cost you any extra to use our link, but it helps out a ton, helps support us to be able to make these videos and continue to educate about these things. Also, if you come on the cruise with us, we do some fun little meetups, a group dinner, give out some little swag type things to everybody, and it's just such a fun time. So yeah, if this video helps you at all, please consider using our links because it helps out so much. We did daily vlog this, so if you want to see as much kind of behind the scenes that's not just this information, but kind of see what the cruise ship looked like and what everything was going on, those are going to come out a little bit after this, so weekly they'll be coming out after this video, so we'll link those down below if you want to see those to get a little bit more information and an inside view of what the cruise is really like. Now let's get into the video. The demographic on Temptation Cruise is skews a little bit younger than a typical lifestyle event. And first of all, Temptation Cruise is not geared necessarily towards a swinging cruise. It's not labeled as a swinging lifestyle cruise, such as some of the other cruises out there. But it is more like an adult spring break. And so we will say there are a lot of people who are in the swinging lifestyle. It is a lot different than the Temptation Resort. It does feel like there's a lot more couples, probably a majority couples. Mm -hmm. And a majority of those couples at least know what the swinging lifestyle is, if not are at least part of that spectrum. So going on with that, it does skew a little bit more younger than a typical lifestyle cruise. Most of the demographic is around that 40 to 50 year old age range. However, it does skew a little bit younger where we found like we saw a lot of people who were in their like mid 30s into mid 40s. In addition to that, there's also a lot of people who are in their late 20s and early 30s too. So it is like that bell curve with 40 to 50s being the most and then it's Going to tail off into both older than 50 and younger than 50. The crowd is definitely more of a party vibe, very young at heart, adult spring break. There's so, so, so many kind people. And out of all the lifestyle events that we've been to, we do feel like Temptation Cruise has one of the best looking crowds. Temptation Cruise is a five night, six day cruise. And this year was on the Celebrity Summit. It's actually been on the Celebrity Summit every single year. Next year will be on a new ship. It will be on the Norwegian Pearl next year. But this year was Celebrity Summit, which is, I would say, a mid-sized ship. It's around 2,200 people. So it's definitely still a huge crowd compared to something like resorts or anything like that. Next, we're going to talk about the organization of the ship. We are going to touch on this part because I know a lot of people are probably very interested in this specific part. But we are going to talk about the playrooms now. While Temptation Cruise is not labeled as a swinging cruise they do have a playroom for couples only there is only one playroom and it was actually whenever we first got onto the ship it was on the fourth floor and kind of like an open area and that is open during the daytime and at night they close it off so then you do have to go through it wasn't a long line or anything but you do have to like go into the playroom at that point it's not like they have it open all day it's only for a specific amount of time during the night again this is couples only they call it their R rated room really should be like an x-rated room but um, there's a lot of different mattresses kind of that are on the ground there are some that are more rectangular some that are circles and then there are lounge chairs kind of around as well they call it kind of a red room but it's not really red lights it's kind of more like a bluish tint. This specific year there weren't any curtains or really so it's a very exhibitionist style. It's kind of just different beds kind of all around. You don't have to be completely new to go in. You do have to go in as a couple. Whenever we went I was like right behind him because you can't bring in drinks or anything and so I was putting my drink down and they made sure that he had a partner with him and so then I like rushed up to go over there and it does get pretty busy. So one good thing about this specific ship at Temptation Cruise is it's pretty easy to find people because a 
lot of things tend to circulate around the same areas every day. There is a main pool, I would say is the biggest party area. That is right next to the almost open part of the deck where they'll play music. There's a big pool right there. Lots of people stand there, party. In the center, there was a little VIP area that you could rent out and you could have your own little table. And behind that is another bigger pool that I would say is more of a swimming pool. That people one is deep. Yeah. Well, I, I made the mistake of walking into that one time and then, I mean, I'm five foot two and it was like, I felt it. <laughs> uh, I definitely would say that that pool is, people sit around it, but people aren't like swimming laps or anything in there, but it's still pretty busy. And then there's also four hot tubs lined around the outside that are always extremely busy. There was always people in those. And then next to that, once you go pat, once you go to the back of the ship, there was a closed off area and that's the solarium. The solarium is fully nude. That's the one area on the ship besides the playroom that you can be fully nude. Out on the main pool deck, you are allowed to be topless and in certain areas on the cruise, you're allowed to be topless, but solarium is fully nude. We think that was a big part of the reason why the solarium was so busy because the solarium was always busy this year. There was two bigger hot tubs that fit a lot of people, and then there was one pool in the solarium that had almost, uh, it was almost always heated. I definitely was always warm, and that area was also super busy all the time. The solarium is enclosed, and so there's not a ton of sun in there at all. There's a lot of windows though, so you can still see, and not everybody is nude. It is the only place that's nude optional, but we will say a majority of people were not completely nude. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the theme night and theme days. I'm gonna start with the theme days. People don't dress up for the theme days quite as much as the theme nights. And the theme the day is just for the pool party. It was mm -hmm. a theme pool party. Yeah, so they do those on the days that we have sea days. So whenever you have a port, they don't really do it necessarily a pool party. Yes, people are always partying at the pool, but they have pool parties specifically on the days that we are at sea. So one of them was a color pop, which was just kind of wear fun color type party and the other was an inflatable party. The inflatable party, they brought out a bunch of beach balls and had some pool floats and things like that. And so those are the two day theme parties. At night, there is a different nightly theme for every single night of the cruise. We didn't completely love the themes this year. We felt like it was very um, college, frat party, sorority party type themes. There was a pajama or onesie night, toga night, animal party, pimps and hoes, and then everyone's favorite was glow in the dark. And so usually there's always a glow party and it's typically always the last day of the cruise. That's the one that we feel like people probably like the most. Mm -hmm. And we would actually be really sad if there was no glow theme, even though it is redone all the time. But we were pretty disappointed that there wasn't a fetish theme. We will say a majority of people do dress on theme. People really do have a lot of fun with it. They don't go like completely, completely all out like we've seen on some of the other cruises but people really do like to be a part of the theme. I'm gonna go into the food and drink section now. I think one of the biggest things that people are always the most excited to hear about is the idea of the beverage package. The beverage package is included on Temptation Cruise. It's one of the biggest draws. That is, you, know, you can get so something like that, but also alcohol is included. So your alcohol is included on this ship whenever you book Temptation Cruise. This year specifically, and when it was on the Celebrity Summit, you could pay upgraded to get a premium drink package, and that would include those top shelf liquors and some of the other drinks on board, like there was a coffee type restaurant that would do espresso martinis and had frappuccinos, things like that. The premium beverage package that you could upgrade to, it was $90 a person. You could only do it as a couple or as the occupancy of your room, not only one person would be able to do it, and it was up to $17 per drink. And for the 2025 sailing, we've been informed that the drink package is just one drink package, so it's not gonna be multiple. There is supposedly gonna be a Starbucks, and that would be separate, but the rest of the drinks should all be included in next year's 2025 sailing. Regarding the food, we feel like there's a ton of different options. We've been on a lot of cruises, both lifestyle and vanilla cruises, and the Celebrity Summit specifically, we think has one of the best buffets. They have a lot of different options. And even in the main formal dining room, which is where a lot of people would go eat, 
at night. That is also included in your ticket price. The staff is very accommodating for anybody who has any food allergies. Whenever you go into the main dining room before you would eat, they would even ask you, do you have any food allergies? There are some specialty restaurants on the ship as well that you can pay extra for. There is one that was an animation type, kind of more fun little show restaurant and there was a sushi restaurant that we went to that we enjoyed there's also a steak restaurant so there are different specialty restaurants but we do feel like a majority of people either just went to the formal dining that was included or went to the buffet in the morning there was a like big continental breakfast that they had and they had the same foods every day for the breakfast foods and they actually made that later I feel like usually than typical like vanilla cruises and so people are waking up later so you could still go get breakfast and then when it came to lunch and dinner they changed it up a little bit every day so they had different types of food almost like a theme but they never really said what the theme was and they had a ton of dessert options too so if you're a dessert person like me don't worry there is a lot there. accommodation wise the ship is just really really nice it was refurbished in 2021 and so all the rooms are updated they're all kind of more are modern and clean the bathrooms for example have kind of marble well marble on the walls and I mean it's just really really pretty everything is really really nice you know you have a nice bed you have a nice sheet it's just overall a really nice accommodation so activity wise we're gonna start kind of with the playmakers the playmakers this year didn't do quite what they did in the past where I feel like in the past the playmakers are really involved in dancing getting people up to go dance almost like they would at the resorts but here the playmakers more did little games which was really really fun that's how they kind of were involved this year and so the playmakers did different things like there was a relay race one day they had a topless belly flop competition one day there was some sexy stretching they did every day and there was you know a sexy trivia so they just did a bunch of different little pool games that they would do every single day and we really liked that because i think that temptation really does take into consideration what the guests are wanting i know that was something that has never been done before they had a couple games here and there but i feel like this time more like a vanilla cruise there was a ton of different pool games which i thought was super fun they did offer a lot of different seminars and workshops as well we can't really go into detail about the type of <laughs> workshops that they offered um, here on YouTube, but they did offer some hands-on workshops and seminars that you could learn a lot. And moving on into the shows, they do erotic soiree, which is an amazing burlesque mixed with kind of an acrobatic, it's kind of like Cirque du Soleil with burlesque type. And they do have that, at least they have had that every year before. They did change it up a little bit this year. They had a singer there, so they did some live singing and they added in some different acts, took out some acts. So while they do have some of the same acts, we don't ever really feel like it's the same exact show. We do know that that is something that some people didn't like, that they don't really bring in other shows and so that is something to think about and then they also had some comedians there they had some fun musical acts that weren't really in the main theater area but kind of like a lounge kind of music but they would do fun spin-offs on like sexy spin-offs on songs that you know and they also had the standard celebrity shows as well which i think when you're going on a cruise like this those aren't as great because I think people are just expecting it to be different but there are those normal shows as well and they did bring back the adult scavenger hunt this year which we really really liked they had that the year before last but they didn't do it last year which we were really sad about but it's so fun if you've been on a vanilla cruise it's kind of like the quest game show if you're familiar with that you have the audience split into three different teams the playmakers are in charge of specific teams and then they'll have things like whoever can find a toy <laughs> and bring it up on stage they had different things like that and that was really fun to go watch so i'm going to get into the nighttime parties that was probably the biggest draw every single night those would happen after the show and basically the party is just out on the main dance floor by the main pool everyone would go out they usually have black lights going on and people just dance have a great time and that would be out there for a couple hours after that the party would move up into the sky lounge also, there was one that it rained, and so the party was moved to the Sky Lounge earlier because that's completely covered. But around 1.30, the party would start in the Sky Lounge. People would go up there, continue to party. They have more DJs, more people dancing, some lounge areas, places to sit. And then we heard that once that party ended, the Solarium started to be a party. We never stayed up quite that late that we got to go experience the Solarium that late. But it was kind of that progression of parties where it went from the main party to the Sky Lounge 
to the solarium. And into the playroom, if that was what you were wanting to do. <laughs> we feel like the music selection was really good this year too. There was a bigger, I feel like, selection than typical. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as only EDM, I feel like it has been in the past. And so there was more of a variety. Uh, we do wish that they, so on some other cruises, they have different clubs almost where you can listen to specific types of music. So on, Temptation Cruise, sometimes, you know how you want to ha be like dirty dancing with people? Um, they don't really play as much music like that that you could really do that type of dancing to. It was kind of more like, not as EDM as this, but uh, we do wish there was a bit more sensual or R&B music like that. But overall, the DJs were really, really good and we had a great time. Now actually we're gonna talk about ports and excursions. We're not gonna get too much into it because for the most part, this is just like if you're on a vanilla cruise. This cruise stopped in Nassau, Bahamas and Cozumel, Mexico. And the only really adult excursion was in Cozumel. And you basically went on a group. They went to a little island. There was drinks there. We personally didn't go, but we heard it was a nice time. So they did have an option for you to do kind of that adult excursion. I know that one was a topless optional excursion, so they had that if you were looking for it. There also is the normal excursions that you can book just through celebrity, you know, like the dolphin type trips or little snorkeling, all the things you'd find on Vanilla Cruise, they also have those types of excursions as well. A couple miscellaneous things. So as a general rule, Temptation Cruise is a little bit on more of a budget-friendly type of lifestyle vacation compared to some of the other cruises out there. The fact that it does include the premium beverage package I think is a big draw to Temptation, especially with the price. I think it is a great price for everything that you get with the cruise. It is so fun. It's a good amount of time as well. Five nights is good where you're not feeling like you have to go like super, super hard every single day, but there's like enough time to have some downtime in between. And then the staff was absolutely incredible and that goes for both the temptation staff and the celebrity crew staff and they are always ready and wanting and willing to help and so definitely just make sure that you if you do go on these cruises to treat them especially with a lot of respect and they are trying everything they can to make your vacation the best that it can be and we have no complaints about the staff or any of the accommodations the temptation cruise 2024 was absolutely amazing we loved it we always loved temptation cruises always one of our favorite lifestyle events every single year and we cannot be more grateful that we got to go this year and we already have next year booked we are going to be on deck nine so if anyone else is on deck nine hey neighbors <laughs> but yeah it's just it's such an amazing time we had such an amazing time together we really got to connect and spend so much time together plus see so many friends that we knew from the past make so many new friends i mean it was just such an incredible, incredible time. We had an amazing group that came with us. We got to meet so many amazing people through that. And I mean, it was just really one of our favorite lifestyle trips we've ever been on. And I'm so, so thankful we got to go this year. The people on the ship are just so nice. It's such a good group of people, just the entire ship itself. And everybody is there just to have a good time and party. And like I said earlier, everyone is so like young at heart and party at heart. And so it's really cool to go to places like these and be surrounded by so many people who are like-minded and like-hearted. And because there's so many people, you have the opportunity to just have so many different connections. And that's our favorite part of going on these trips like this is being able to connect with like-minded people and then like the partying and the stuff after that is you know just like a cherry on top and so if this video helps you out at all helps with your decision on coming onto temptation cruise sometime in the future if you want to book through our links it helps us out a ton doesn't cost you any extra we do a couple extra little things like have a meetup and dinners and it's just to cultivate a little bit more of a community so you don't feel as kind of by yourself going onto the ship and we also give out some exclusive swag too and so again if you guys want to book with us and be part of the four play group we would love to have you. You can find that information right here at foreplay.com slash cruise or in the links below. But hopefully this information just helps you be able to decide, you know, if this cruise is right for you, if you think it's a good fit. We also plan to do a couple other videos that are comparing Temptation Cruise to the Temptation Resort. We already have a Temptation versus Bliss. So if you want more information to see which one would fit better for you, we'll have those linked down below. But we just hope this was able to help you in some way decide if this is the right type of vacation for you. We definitely know it's the right type of vacation for us because 
videos. So we already booked next year. We absolutely love it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like this video, subscribe so you never miss when we post a video. And if you guys have any other questions about maybe things that we didn't cover, um, make sure to drop those down below. Or so if you want even more detail, we do have a podcast that we'll have linked down below. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.